so what is up YouTube welcome back to the channel once again you know I appreciate having you here thanks again to Doble's Motorcycles in Coulston they've given me another bike they've given me the keys to this so this video is all about this little beauty the CB 1100 RS So here we are on another naked bike from Honda, this time the CB1100 RS. Big Bruiser Interline 4, old school retro with slight modern touches. And I have to say, it's creamy. It's creamy smooth. I can't go too max, I've got no fuel. <laughs> I don't want to run out of fuel before I get to the petrol station. Right, so let me tell you a little bit about myself before we really get into this. Six foot two, 16 stone, long in the leg, quite wide in the shoulder. And this is basically so you know how I get to the conclusions I get to, especially when it's ergonomics. Right, so let's have a little bit of a play and uh, get to that petrol station, fill out a bit more juice, and then I can go somewhere and have a little look around and take you through some of the features and the bits I like about this bike. Clutch is really nice, quite light, very smooth. The gear change is very, very smooth. It feels really nice. It, oh, it really is smooth. I think that's going to be the theme for this one. Smooth. And maybe I might mention the word buttery every now and again. Let's go smooth and buttery for this one. And considering she's heavy, she's not bad. She handles quite well. Obviously, she's not going to go side to side like a really light sports bike or a supermoto or anything like that. But Considering it is a heavy lump, I'm not actually sure of the weight of it. Again, as per usual with my stuff, if you want to know anything about this bike, the specs, I shall leave the link to Doble Motorcycles website below and also to Honda's website where they've got the specs on this. That will all be below in the descriptions box because my rides are all about how it feels to me and how it makes me feel on the bike. And so far, I feel really good on this. Maybe because I'm an older gentleman. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe I just like this retro style. I embrace it. I've said it before. I really like retro throw bikes I don't own one but I really like them I don't know why I don't own one I think it's because it rains all the bloody time over in England if it didn't rain then maybe I would because I'm not one for cleaning bikes and these old style retro bikes tend to take a lot of cleaning because they have the air-cooled fins on and stuff like that and do you know what I'm just too lazy to own one I'd love one but I'm too lazy to own one it'd be filthy it'd look minging let's go in here and stick a splash of juicage in it you're not getting a lot because whoever gets the next test ride gets the benefit of my money see these test rides are not all glory you know Sometimes it costs you money. Right, I got some juice in her, so let's go and have a play. Right, so comfort-wise, at the moment, pretty comfortable. I love this seat. It's not too hard, not too soft. It's like Alcantara. I'm not sure if it is, but it looks like it is. And it's it's really good. It's got no slip on it. Because if this was like a plasticky seat, I have a feeling, because it's quite flat, you'll be sliding backwards and forwards. But because it is this Alcantara material, you've got quite a lot of grip. Space to the pegs. They're actually quite tucked behind me. Not full-on sports bike, but not directly below me like a, a retro kind of bike. It's quite a sporty position. I don't know whether it's because this is the RS that they tuck them back there, but it feels quite good. It, it leans me over the front slightly. Not too bad. The weight is not all on my wrist, so it's not a bad thing. Well, I've got long legs, so uh, as you can see, my legs are right on the limit. They're right on the tip of the indentation of the tank. So if you've got shorter legs than me, you'll be fine. You can tuck them right in. And what that means is because it's sculpted, it blows the wind around your knees. So you don't get that effect that you get on some bikes where it's trying to rip your legs apart with the wind. That's never pleasant. Right, so let's talk about the clocks. I like the clocks. Retro style, analog. But you haven't seen that for a while. I don't think I've done a video with a bike that's got analog clocks on. I love it. I love an analog rev counter. I mean, look at this needle. Oh, there's something quite sexual about that. Got a digital bit in the middle. We shall go through this when I do the walkabout. Walkabout? I'm not Australian. Do the walk around. It's guy walkabout, mate. Personally, I would like wider handlebars. These handlebars to me are a bit slim. So because it's such a heavy bike, you don't get that leverage you would if you had wider bars. That's a personal thing because I'm quite wide in the shoulder maybe. But you can just roll around in sixth gear. This engine is just, oh, smooth. When you get a right up into the rev range, about 5,000, it really starts to pick up even more. It's really smooth up to that point. There's no flat spots. And then it gives another little kick there and you get a bit more grunt. I'm enjoying this. This is a really nice bike. It's really comfortable. It's like an old school way of riding. It is reminiscing time. This reminds me of 
my old 1200 bandit days so obviously this is better built than my 1200 bandit that was a piece of shit it's nice to reminisce it's nice to step back into that old school kind of vibe this has no traction control it's got abs obviously but it's got no traction control no rider aids it's all about these but the way the power's delivered i don't feel like i'm going to get in trouble maybe with the law but i'm not going to get in trouble as in i don't feel like as i'm coming out the bends i don't feel the back skipping i don't feel like it's about to high side me i don't feel like it's pushing the front it's just it's a nice balance between quick and comfortable obviously you're going to have a lot of wind blast on this because it's a naked bike but as i said with most naked bikes the wind blast is pretty pure so you don't get any buffeting but as an all day country lane come a road b road fun bike i like it and i like it because it's easy you know my opinions on easy everyone's got this opinion that bikes that are difficult to ride bikes that are not dangerous but bikes that blow your mind bikes that are on the edge all the time are the ones to have but maybe because i'm older again i don't believe that anymore i've had those types of bikes and you know what after a while you kind of get bored with uh panicking over every bend you go into panicking about the power panicking about this sometimes you just need to chill out and relax in your life and that's what this bike's about don't get me wrong it's not slow it's 1100 cc in line four so it's not going to be slow but it's not quick by modern standards if that makes any sense it's not a pure blaster it's just got dollops and dollops of torque really let's get into it creamy buttery smooth yeah told you i'd say it didn't i and i like that in a bike i like a bike that i can get on and feel like i want to ride all day that i want to go places on that i want to get out in the sunshine chill out go down the coast go into the countryside strap a few things to the back and just have a nice day and that's what this bike makes me feel like as i said in the winter when it's uh, pretty shit weather and you've got to clean it every 10 minutes i'm not sure if i want to own it then but on a sunny day it's a nice place to be i love this gear change this is one of the nicest gear changes i've felt on a bike it's quite organic but you just know when it's in every gear got plenty of power one criticism of this little dashboard is uh, you can't quite see the indicators lit up on here the two arrows green flashing ones so you're going to leave them on every now and again only a small criticism but a criticism nevertheless and this road's really bumpy so this tests the suspension and it's uh, okay it's not really soft and it's not really hard i can feel it skipping ever so slightly but it is quite planted one of the beauties of a bike like this is you can ride it quite quickly but you can also ride it slow it's quite docile when it's at low revs and it's quite easy to get on with yes it's heavy but you don't feel that once it's on the move you'll only feel that if you want to pick it up and bench press it which i don't see why you'd want to do that because that's not normal but for just poodling around country lanes considering it's a, a big old lump 1100 cc it feels like it's made for this type of thing it feels like it's made for bimbling around then when you fancy get a little bit excited you can go and just go Whoa! right so here we have honda's retro styled cb 1100 rs and this is different to the normal cb 1100 because of the wheels the styling and various things on it now i'm not going to tell you the main differences what i'm going to do is tell you what's on this bike right so let's start with the wheels and then work our way around i want to show you some of the features on this bike it is quite cool i really like it i love the styling let's actually just look at the styling for a minute before we crack on with the, the rest of the bike it's retro i mean this engine has been around for i don't know donkey's years it's been around for ages and the refinement on it is exceptional i mean they've got it down to a fine art let's crack on it's a 120 70 17 on the front and on the back we've got a 180 55 17 on the back pretty chunky on the back a nice size on the front because they're 17 inch wheels you can get pretty decent tires for this this one's running the battleax sport touring t30rs bridgestones and they're pretty good tires i have to admit and that kind of uh, leads you on to where they want this bike to go it's kind of a sports touring bike 
but it's a naked package a retro package but it handles quite well it's surprising how good it handles for the size and because you expect it to be old school because the engine's so old and the model the cb1100 is quite an old model as in it's been around for a few years you kind of expect it to be wallowy a bit weak but it's not they've done really good things with this rs version right break this twin discs on the front abs as usual nice chunky forks i like these forks they're just oosh i don't know what that means but they are they're shower forks they're fully adjustable they're these uh what they call them uh, it's written up here show up dual bending valve have no idea what that means but it sounds cool doesn't it go and check out the specifications down below in the descriptions box and uh maybe you can do your research on that but it sounds cool because they're dual bending don't know what it means anyway let's carry on takiko calipers on the front and on the back you've got a nissing caliper uh suspension on the back is showa as well double it's got two shocks, one that side, one that side, and they're adjustable. They show, as I say, piggyback styly. I don't know why I said styly, but I did. Engine-wise, 1100cc, there or thereabouts. Inline four, you've got these lovely four pipes coming out. Look at that, that is old school. I love that. I love the way it sits in this frame. It's this retro frame, so it goes all the way under, and the engine sits in there. On modern bikes, they use the engine as a stress member, but on this, it's like, it's yeah it's old school i like it it harks back it harks back and it looks good with these air cooling fins on there it's just nice it's just a big solid lump and oh oh that's all i can say on that oh here it's all nice this is not plastic this is all metal as you would expect on a bike of this quality aluminium there yeah it is i was just checking <laughs> hey and you can see you've got all these gubbins here to make it look like you've got carburetors behind there but guess what you haven't anyway down to the foot pegs squidgy take the vibrations out a nice hanger there rear pillion pegs uh, just standard quite small but the rear pillion gets quite a good seat there that's not a bad seat uh, you've got an attachment point there and uh, it's a pretty big bracket but it does hold the exhaust on i would change the exhaust to be honest uh, not that there's anything wrong with them they sound okay they're just need to be free the sound just needs to be free it needs to get a little bit more of a bark in it a little deeper tone not loud just a little bit deeper and it'll be perfect they're a bit big i'd like to i don't know shorten them up and just uncover this back end just slightly more that's all my opinion as you know these are just my opinions uh, i like the way the frame kicks up into here and into this grab rail you've got a nice grab rail on here with some tie down points there there and you can use that one as well around the back it's just a, a big ass light this is the worst thing about it is the back end but then again it tends to be the worst thing about modern bikes is the back end because of regulations they have to i don't know what they do they just stick any old shit on the back and uh, expect you to get a hacksaw out cut it up and make your bike look good so yep it's a big ass light i haven't gone through the lights i'll do that in a minute but yeah i'd cut that off right through there hacksaw it put all your stuff up there make it look a whole lot better right seat wise very comfortable it's got this anti-slip kind of effect on it. it looks like alcantara but i would say it's not actually i'm pretty sure it's not but it is really good because it stops you slipping around because it is quite flat when you accelerate you don't want a shiny seat because you don't want your backside going all the way off the back there so you're just hanging on with your arms so pretty good seat not too hard not too soft very supportive and if you're a pillion it looks pretty good it looks like you're going to be okay back then you've got a few tie down points you've got one there one there and you can use that loop there in the pillion peg you've got a couple of uh holes on this side with keys in that is your helmet lock and this takes the seat off so i'll do that for you for those of you that want to know what type of sandwiches you can get under the seat stay tuned for this bit right so let's take the seat off and have a look uh, not a lot here as you would expect but under here you've got a tool kit a small tool kit and uh, enough room for a few bits a phone wallet and a sandwich but only if you cut it in half if you use that normal bread and you cut it in half that fit there nicely but you won't get a baguette under there also on this side uh, again squidgy foot peg gear shift nice and short very precise i love this gearbox one of the best things about this bike is the gearbox because the engine's quite old it's been around for quite a few years they've got this gear shift down perfectly i loved it it was so precise it was just beautifully smooth it matches the whole bike the whole thing about this bike is smooth 
and that gear shift one of the best you've also got a center stand which is nice on this type of bike right headlight wise on the front leds full leds and led indicators you've got a little ring that runs around the outside that is broken up slightly and you've got these four little led lights two in the middle and two right at the top that are quite bright for standard lights i shall shove it on full beam now so you can see that so that's your full beam this lights up the bottom strip as well and uh, i don't know if you can see that but it's actually blinding me at the moment it is really bright that is a very very good light and uh, that's another thing i like about these modern retros although retro bikes look cool these modern ones are so much safer right on the back in this absolutely hideous thing they've got on the back is full leds as well your normal lights and your brake lights and also led indicators on the rear as well right let's go through the controls and uh, the dashboard on the left hand side you've got an adjustable clutch you've got your full beams your normal headlights and your push to pass your flasher you've got a hooter here and your indicators on the right hand side you've got a front brake lever which again is adjustable you've got your kill switch your hazard lights and your starter obviously and your throttle check this out for a bit of old school the needle sweep who remembers that we've got kilometers per hour on the inside miles per hour on the outside of this one you've got an engine management light neutral abs which goes off at five miles an hour full beam and i'm trying to look what this last one is that is engine temperature over here rev counter uh, you've got your oil pressure light and your hiss light which is your uh, immobilizer system that honda do in the middle here is lcd stuff there's no fancy gadgets on the handlebars to control it it's all controlled with these little buttons down here select button and uh set button so we just scroll through you're on miles at the moment then it goes to trip a and there's three parts to trip a and three parts to trip b so trip a does uh 61.5 that's the miles it's done in trip a then it goes to 9.9 .9, which is miles per liter and it goes to another one which is 6.2 with the L just under it which is litres so I think that's the litres it's used in total on trip A and then B is the same 61.5 9.9 miles per litre and then the 6.2 with a litre mark and then you've got instant consumption as you're going along which is miles per litre I don't know if you can change it between litres and gallons you'll have to check the specs for that up here you've got a gear indicator even on this 1100 you've got a gear indicator which is a good idea because the engine is that smooth you kind of need to know which gear you're in at the top you've got a clock and at the bottom you've got your fuel gauge so that's about it for the details and the walk around the bits i know the bits i like again if you want to know uh, any specifics or the proper specifications go to the description box below i will put in honda's page for this bike so you can check out everything there and it'll be just under doble's website right so let's conclude this video what do i think about the bikes right ergonomics pretty good uh, the legs are quite light they're not too low and they're not too high they are tucked up slightly behind you so quite sporty for this type of bike and i like that right handlebar wise this is not my thing i don't like them so much they're too small that the width is not enough for me i'm quite wide in the shoulder and i kind of would like to be out here more i'd have more control if the bars were out here than in here they're too thin for me it's just me and it's just my body shape but i would change the bars i'd put a wider bar and i'd probably come up an inch as well clocks i love the clocks i love this retro analog system with a little lcd in the middle it's quite simple very effective does what it's supposed to do i like it mirrors not a fan of these mirrors you can see behind you if you tuck your elbows in again i'm quite wide so most mirrors i can't see behind me because the handlebars are not very wide they're actually placed further in than i'd like so i'd have to put some extenders on there and get them out and i'm not sure i like the round ones i'm not sure if i like these at all suspension it's a nice mix between quite firm and quite soft so it's a medium balance it's just on the standard setting i picked it up with i haven't played around with it i haven't even looked at what the settings are but it feels okay on the road when it's nice and smooth like this it's perfect when it gets a bit bumpy it doesn't get lively but you can feel the bumps but all in all not too bad brakes very good i like them this is a heavy bike so don't expect it to stop in an instant it does take a little bit to stop the bike a little bit of a tug on the lever but you would expect that from that this is not a carbon fiber lightweight bike but let's get down to the main thing of this the engine the engine and the gearbox this is the best thing about this bike this engine and this gearbox is so sweet it is so smooth it is so perfected that's the word it's perfected the gear shift is just sublime the way the torque is delivered is so lovely it's a real nice easy bike to get on with 
this is a bike you would take out on a really nice sunny day and just blast around the countryside this is probably not a bike you would use every day you can because you can use any bike every day if you want but it's kind of too nice for that this is the bike you want to clean you want to keep pristine you want to keep the shine on it i wouldn't want to get it dirty I wouldn't want to have to clean it. I feel like it's doing it a disservice if you get it dirty. Yeah, I think if you had one bike and you wanted to use it all the time, you probably wouldn't buy this bike. You'd buy something else. But if you've got the luxury of having more than one bike and you just want a bike in a garage to look at, that looks kind of sweet if you're into this retro thing. This is right up there. I think it gets overlooked because of all the other manufacturers hark on about, oh, look, we've got this retro this, we've got this retro that. Whereas Honda kind of snuck this one in. And if you don't know it's there, you kind of overlook it. Right, so the big question is, would I buy this bike? Well, it's kind of a yes and no answer. Yes, part of me would buy it. I would buy it because I love the look of it. I love this engine and gearbox. I like the idea of it. I'd like to go out on sunny days and just cruise around and just have fun on it and relax and chill out and do that type of riding on it. But then no, I wouldn't buy it because it limits itself, in my opinion, for my style of riding just to that. I wouldn't like to take this out into the rain i wouldn't take this out on a cold november day when it's peeing down with rain and there's salt on the road i wouldn't like to do that because i wouldn't like to bloody clean it so uh yeah it's a yes and no answer yes it's a bloody good bike and if i could afford to put it in the garage alongside the millions of other bikes that i would buy i would probably have one but no i wouldn't swap me africa twin and my crf 250 for one i suppose that's the end of the video not really a conclusion it's kind of a yes and no bike i'm confused as usual uh it doesn't take a lot for me to get confused as you've seen right so if i've got to actually be cutthroat and say yes or no would i buy it i'm going to do it in the sense of buying it as an only bike and riding it every day of the week like i do normally then no or maybe yes if i could hire a cleaner to just clean my bikes every time i got it home then yeah i'd buy it but seeing as i don't have a cleaner no or yes i'm confused i don't know maybe let's call it a maybe i can't say one or the other it's a maybe so on that note i'm going to end the video here thank you very much for watching as per usual if you're down in the causeland area go and check out doble motorcycles go down there check out their website below check out honda's website below you can get all the information there that just leaves me to say thank you very very much for watching you know i love you all i shall see you on the next one stay safe fish out get all your bags get out my house i don't want your stuff around i never did you wrong but you did me wrong so go ahead get go, gone get all your bags get out my house i don't want your stuff around i never did you wrong but you did me wrong so go ahead and get